In today's video, I'm going to give you the five best investing apps for beginner investors. So if you're brand new to investing or are just getting started, you definitely want to stay and watch this video because by the end, you'll know the perfect investing app for you. I'm going to take some time to discuss each app, um, some of the pros and cons and things that I think that app does really well compared to other investing apps on the market. I'll also take time to discuss what type of investor should use each of these apps. And so by the end of the video, you should have a really good understanding of which app is gonna be best for you as a beginner investor. All right, so first on the list is M1 Finance. Now, I've personally been using M1 Finance for several months now. I use it for a couple of my investment accounts and I just love the app, but that's not why I have it first on the list. I put M1 Finance first on the list because I truly do believe that it's one of the best investing apps for beginners and here's why. For starters, M1 Finance is completely free to use. And I mean, really what's there to hate about that? But aside from that, I personally just find that M1 Finance is extremely intuitive and just easy to use. As a beginner investor, it's probably likely that you don't wanna be bogged down with complex charts and lots of different numbers and things that don't really make sense to you. And M1 Finance does a really good job of organizing the data within your account to make it easy to understand. I can go through the app, take a look at my investment portfolios and see just how well they're performing throughout the day. And so it gets really addicting to just open up the app throughout the day just to see if your portfolio is up or if it's down. Clicking on my portfolios here will open up all the stocks that I'm currently holding. I can scroll down and see exactly how each individual stock is performing as well as what percentage of my overall portfolio each stock makes up. Now, by clicking on the stock, I get even more information. I can see details about how many shares I own, uh, the average price per share, different graphs, news about the stock, and even how overweight or underweight the stock is in my portfolio. But to be honest with you, that's not even where M1 Finance excels because nowadays there's plenty of investing apps that are pretty to look at. Where M1 Finance truly excels is with a feature in their app called Expert Pies. Now to truly understand what this feature does, I think it's important to first mention that within M1 Finance portfolios or investment portfolios, are called pies. This is kind of just M1 Finance's way of making investing uh, less intimidating. For example, you can invest in a wide range of portfolios, including general investing, retirement portfolios, socially responsible portfolios, dividend portfolios, and one of my personal favorites, hedge fund followers or hedge fund portfolios. And so you can really begin to see the power of these portfolios, especially as a beginner, you don't have to spend your time trying to research individual stocks or ETFs. With M1 Finance, you can just pick from one of these expert pies and you can just add that to your portfolio and that's it, you're done. Even if you didn't want to invest in these pre-built portfolios, M1 Finance still allows you to build your own customized portfolio from scratch. So what type of beginner investor should use M1 Finance? I think that M1 Finance is such a diverse investing app that really any type of investor can use it. As a beginner investor or somebody who is relatively new to investing, you can be comfortable knowing that your money is hard at work with an M1 Finance using their pre-built portfolios. Hey, by the way, if you haven't already, hit that like button for me if you've gotten some value from this video. I would appreciate it so very much. All right, so number two is Acorns. It would be impossible to make a list like this and not include Acorns. So Acorns is an app that sort of uh, popularized this idea of micro investing or investing really small amounts of money. This app is particularly popular for uh, its spare change investing feature. So whenever you go and buy something, you have the option to round up your purchases. So say for example, you purchased a $2.12 cup of coffee. Well, Acorns gives you the option to round up that $2.12 purchase to a whole $3. Then the difference between $2.12 and $3 would just be automatically invested for you. Now, Acorns definitely isn't the only app that has this feature. There are plenty of apps out there that will invest your spare change for you. Acorns just kind of like made the idea popular. So if that's the case, why should you even use Acorns? I mean, what's so special about the app? Well, for starters, Acorns has one of the cleanest interfaces that I've seen for pretty much any investing app. From the beginning, like creating your actual account and then logging in and actually managing your account is super fluid with 
with Acorns. There's really not much friction at all when it comes to using this app. And then when it comes to actually investing, it gets even easier. Acorns has five primary investment portfolios that you can choose from ranging from conservative to aggressive and everything else in between. You simply pick from one of these portfolios and that's it. There's no individual stock picking, no portfolio rebalancing, nothing. You simply pick a portfolio and go. Then every time you deposit money into your Acorns account, the app will automatically invest your money into your portfolio that you selected. Now, I don't personally use Acorns because I just prefer to have a little bit more control over my investment portfolio, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it. In fact, there's over 9 million people actively using Acorns and so that should be a really good indication that the app really is good. Now, like I said, I prefer to be more hands-on with my investment portfolio, but if you prefer to take a more backseat approach to investing and let someone else or something else control your investments, then Acorns is probably a good fit for you. Now, I do wanna add that Acorns does require a subscription to use the app. There's three subscriptions, a $1, $3, and $5 per month subscription each subscription comes with different benefits. I would say that most people could get away with just using the $1 per month subscription and that would fit you perfectly fine. Now, I don't wanna get into the details of each subscription and what they do and don't do. Um, that's not the point of this video, but I, I do think it's important to add that just in case that is a factor that you wanna consider. So, what type of beginner investor should use Acorns? I would say that the investor who hates investing and doesn't want anything to do with investing but still wants to invest, should use Acorns. Acorns is an app that allows you to invest without being hands-on at all. In fact, the whole premise of the app is to not have to worry about your investment and just let Acorns do all the hard work for you. So if that sounds like you and that sounds like your investment style, then you should probably go with Acorns. Now, what if you wanted something exactly like Acorns, but with the option to customize your portfolio or tweak it just a little bit? If that sounds like you, then I think this next app will suit you a lot better than Acorns will. All right, so next up on our list is Stash. Now, Stash is almost identical to Acorns in terms of features and functionality. The main the major difference between Stash and Acorns is that with Stash, you can actually customize your portfolio. Now, when you first get started with the app, you will get an automated portfolio similar to Acorns. The difference though is that you actually can customize your portfolio with individual stocks or ETFs once that portfolio has been created initially. You can even sort through stocks by categories such as trending stocks and recent IPOs or you can search for stocks by specific sectors. The same is true with the ETFs. You can search for ETFs by category or by Stash's curated collections. So for the most part, Stash is a very simple investing app that's really similar to Acorns, but just has a little bit more flexibility with what you can do with your specific investment portfolio. Now, I do think it's important to add that with Stash, similar to Acorns, there is a subscription that is required for you to use the app. Now there's two subscriptions subscriptions with Stash. One is a $1 per month subscription. The other is a $9 per month subscription. I would say that 95% of people would get away with just using the $1 per month or $12 per year subscription, and that would work perfectly fine for you. Now, I'm going to leave it up to you to decide whether you think um, paying $12 per year to have somebody else invest for you is worth it or not. That's a decision that you have to make for yourself. But just know that there are apps out there, such as M1 Finance, that don't cost anything and basically do the same thing as Stash. So, what type of beginner investor should use Stash? I think if you um, if you want the option to have automated portfolios, but you also plan on potentially purchasing individual shares of stocks or different ETFs in the future, I think you should be looking at Stash instead of something like Acorns for your specific investment needs. Number four on the list is Webull. Now, I, I really like Webull. In fact, I've recently started using it for my day trading and I'm finding that it's just really easy to use compared to other more traditional uh, brokerages out there. And so Webull is definitely more of a traditional broker in that um, it's primarily used to actively trade on the market. Like you wouldn't use Webull if you wanted to have the option to purchase pre-built portfolios like you would with M1 or Stash or Acorns. If you want to have just 100% control over your portfolio and are possibly considering actively day trading on the stock market in the future, 
then you should really consider using Webull. Now, there isn't a whole lot that actually separates Webull or makes it unique from other brokers out there, such as Fidelity or TD Ameritrade. Where Webull really separates itself from the competition is in its platform, the, the flexibility, the intuitiveness, and also just the amount of free tools that they offer. Webull offers a desktop app for Mac, Windows, and even Linux. You can also download the app with both iOS and Android, and you can even use the browser version of the platform. And so there's a lot of different ways you can use the software, and if you like to have that flexibility, then Webull gives you that flexibility. And on top of all of that, Webull's software is just extremely intuitive and easy to use, even as a beginner investor, and it's free and you can't go wrong with free. Now, I'm more accustomed to using brokers such as Fidelity and TD Ameritrade, and these, these brokers tend to have more of a learning curve to them, but Webull does a really great job of just like simplifying the, the process of buying and selling stocks or ETFs or other investments. It makes it really easy so that even a beginner investor can pick up the app or download the software and begin building their portfolio from scratch. And if you're a new investor who plans on sort of actively trading on the stock market, Webull offers a ton of really intuitive and even free tools that you can use. You can even get level two market data for $2 per month, which is really just unheard of. So what type of beginner investor should use Webull? I would say that if you wanted complete control over your portfolio, and you also planned on potentially actively trading on the stock market or like trading IPOs or something like that, then you should really consider using Webull. Although Webull can be used for experienced investors, um, it's still intuitive enough and, and easy enough to use that even a beginner investor can pick it up and start using it out of the box. All right, so finally, number five is Robinhood. So if you've been in the investing world for even just a day, it's, it's likely that you've heard of Robinhood somewhere. Robinhood is a extremely popular, but also very controversial investing app that really changed the investing landscape permanently by pioneering this idea of commission-free stock trading. You see, prior to Robinhood, it was nearly impossible to find any type of brokerage that offered zero commissions on any type of uh, trading activity, be it stocks or ETFs or anything else. Robinhood, in a way, forced other brokers to sort of get with the times and offer commission-free trading. And so you kind of saw this trend where when Robinhood started to get really popular, a lot of other really popular brokers began to offer commission-free stock trading as well. So why would I recommend Robinhood to uh, beginner investors? Well, despite a lot of the hate that Robinhood gets for being so fun, um, that's just the thing. Robinhood is really good at making investing a lot less intimidating. And in my opinion, Robinhood is one of the easiest investing apps to use out of the box. Robinhood is known for sort of gamifying investing. When you use the app, there are all sorts of like animated pop-ups and, and bright contrasty colors, interesting, funny looking illustrations and, and different artwork. Now, in terms of like features and functionality, to be honest with you, Robinhood is not that different from any other investing app out there. But where Robinhood really separates itself is in its ability to make investing a very beginner friendly experience. From the outside, investing can be extremely intimidating and it's the reason why most people never actually start because they're just afraid of it. Robinhood helps to rectify that by really just like simplifying everything. Building your portfolio in Robinhood is seamless and easy. Even as a beginner, if you didn't want to buy individual stocks, you can still use Robinhood to purchase like shares of diversified ETFs such as Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, which is one of my favorite ETFs if you wanted just like a very broad market exposure. Now, I do think it's important to mention that this sort of gamification that Robinhood has created around investing can be somewhat dangerous. If you're a new investor and you don't know much about the markets in general, Robinhood makes it almost too easy to begin trading and to begin investing. And we've seen this happen time and time again where Robinhood is on the news for uh, just being too fun or being too easy to use, which um, can be dangerous for new investors who just hop into the market without any experience. So what type of beginner investor should use Robinhood? I would say that a beginner investor who has a little bit of experience should use Robinhood. If you want complete 
control over your portfolio. In other words, you don't wanna just use a pre-built portfolio that somebody else has, has given to you or that a system has automatically created for you then you should use Robinhood. Robinhood gives you a ton of flexibility over your portfolio. You can buy and sell individual stocks and ETFs or bond ETFs or really just about anything that trades on the stock market. The app is also very easy to use, which is, is fantastic for new investors, but I would just recommend that you have a little bit of experience under your belt before you begin using Robinhood, just so that you don't get yourself into trouble and lose money unnecessarily. Okay, and there you have it, the, the top five investing apps for beginners. I hope that by now you have a very solid idea of which one of these apps you're going to go with. I've got links to all of these apps in the description below. If you just want to really quickly click on one to go to the app, you can. So one last tip I just wanted to give you, if you're brand new to investing and you're sort of just kind of getting your feet wet, I just want to encourage you to not be scared of investing. Don't, don't let these complex words and these fancy terms that investors use intimidate you because I promise that investing is not as scary as you probably are making it seem in your mind. I promise you. Just use one of these pre-built portfolios that these apps offer to uh, get started. And once you get started and you get more comfortable, you'll never look back again. Hey, leave me a comment down below. Tell me which app you plan on using. If you use a different app other than the ones I've listed here, mention it. Maybe you can help somebody else out. Also, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. I would love to have you back on my videos, which I post about three times a week anyway, so you don't want to miss out on those. Remember to hit that bell notification, and if you still have not liked the video, I would really appreciate it if you did so. It means a lot to me, so if you're still watching this far, I just want to tell you that you're awesome, and I will see you again very soon. Take care.